Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's MIDI Composer and Symphony, got another email from a viewer that I think warrants a tutorial. It's from Stavros, and Stavros says, Hello, Mr. McAuliffe, I'm studying editing from last year, and your tutorials are really, really useful. I want to ask you what the matter of consolidate slash transcode means. Also, I want to know more about batch importing, what exactly it is, and if I must do something different in the export of AMA. Thank you very much in advance, Stavros. You know, Stavros, consolidating and transcoding is one of those questions that's asked to me all the time. So that's why I thought that your email, and actually the emails of sort of everyone who's asked me about consolidating and transcoding, definitely is one that needs to be answered, and answered in the form of this tutorial. Okay, short introduction, let's just get into Symphony, and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Symphony, obviously Alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And the first thing that I'm going to need to work with is, of course, some clips. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open my clips bin. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say import. And sure, why don't we just import some surfing clips? I'll just select the first three here. And I'm just going to make sure we're going to our Mac drive. I'm going to use DVC Pro HD as their resolution because that is what they are. Inside of options, I am imaged sized for current format. Now, this is RGB footage. Why? Because that's how I exported it from Digital Juices Juicer. And I don't have an alpha channel, so I'm just going to simply ignore that. I'm just going to, again, I have to select the three files here, simply say open. They'll take a second to import here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the three shots and I'm going to drop them into a new sequence. And I'm going to show you how batch importing works for these clips. Because there's really only certain situations where you would use batch import. Okay, so the last clip's almost done importing. Here we go, there's our clips into a bin. I'll just bring the bin down here. I'll just open the sequences bin just like such. We'll just drag that up here. And I'm just going to, eh, sure, we'll start from the bottom. Okay, we got our surfer, I guess surfer woman, surfer girl. I'm not sure what the politically correct term to use is. We'll just start out with her. I'm simply going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Drop that into my sequences bin here. I'll just grab the next clip here. Sure, it's this guy here who has a total fail right about there. Perfect, of course. Don't mind showing that. Perfect. Again, B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Of course, I'm dropping in audio just because I had audio when I created the new sequence. That's okay. Don't really need it here. And of course, here's our surfer woman. There we go. Right into the wave. Just back that up a little bit here. Perfect. Okay. So where would I use something like batch import? Well, let's see. I have my timeline here. Three clips. Everything's looking great. So I'm done for the day. So what I do is I just call my sequence, of course, surfing. Let's just go back here. Surfing. There we go. I'm going to close that sequences bin. And I'm going to close the clips bin. I go home. You know, I think everything's perfect. You know, no problem. And what happens is an editor comes in in the middle of the night and says, okay, you know what? I need, I need some free space. i got to clean this project up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. Okay, there's some clips in here. You know what? This editor doesn't need these clips. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select them. I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to delete only the associated media files to free up some space. Perfect. Okay. So then that editor goes home, and you, of course, come in the next morning. You come up to your sequences bin. You're all ready to show this to the client. You bring it down here, double click, and you go, oh my God, my sequence is media offline. What do I do? Well, in this case, this is where you're going to use batch import. Most people think that they would just re import their clips and start attempting to figure out where all these edit points are, and you don't need to do that. What we can do is simply navigate back to the clips bin. I can select all my clips, simply navigate up to clip, and I can come down to batch import right here. I can simply say batch import the offline items only. You'll see that Symphony knows where those three clips are. I can simply say import. Now, if I wanted to, if I needed to change something like, you know, let's say the color space or something like that, I could override the clip settings with the current settings and get in and make some adjustments. But in this case, I don't have to do that. I'm just simply going to say import. And what's going to happen here is that in a matter of seconds, now obviously this will vary depending on how many clips you actually need to rebatch import. And of course I'm only working with DVC Pro 720p footage. So it's obviously not as large as you might get with some 1920 by 1080 2398 you know, frame per second clips. But you'll see basically in a matter of a few seconds, I now have my timeline back ready to go. But of course, there might be a different scenario. What would that different scenario be, Kev? Well, let me show you. So what's happened is, you as the editor has gone home, sequence has been closed, clips been closed, the editor comes in afterwards and said, you know what, I really don't like that Kevin P. McCall. If I'm really going to try to screw up his edit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these clips, and instead of just deleting the media, I'm going to delete everything. Say, see you later, delete. What happens is I come in in the morning, of course, clips is closed. I come in in the morning, I go to my sequences, I come in, I'm like, ugh. 
media offline. Somebody probably came in and was, you know, doing some media cleanup and my stuff got deleted by accident. You know what? No problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the clips bin. Oh, no. All my clips are gone. So now what do I do? Well, there's a couple things that I can do in this situation. The first thing that I can do is I can come in and say, well, you know what? I'm going to see all the clips that are associated with this sequence. And how I could do that is to simply navigate down to the hamburger in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to come up to set bin display. And I'm going to say, show me the reference clips inside of this bin. You'll see that by choosing that, I can select the reference clips to see all the source material related to the sequence I have in my bin. So therefore, by checking that and saying OK, I can now see all of the clips that are in this timeline. What I can now do is simply select them all here, just hold Shift on the keyboard, navigate up to Clip, come back down to Batch Import, say Offline, say Go, and you'll see, here we go, Symphony's cranking through these clips to import them, to drop them back into my timeline so that I'm back up and running. And you'll see again, pretty quick imports for DVC Pro HD 720p footage. And there we go, and you'll see as soon as that clip is done, boom, there we go. There's all my footage back online, ready to go. Very nice. Now, let me just give you another situation. I'm just going to select these. I'm just going to delete them. I'm going to remove the associated media. Let's say that I didn't have the set bin display selected or the show reference clips inside of set bin display. I'm just going to say OK. What could you do to get these clips back and get the media back with them as well? What you can do is instead of going in and setting set bin display, you can simply select your sequence, navigate up to clip, navigate up to batch import, simply say offline, simply say import. And of course, I've just done the exact same process. The only difference here in doing it the way that I just showed you is what's going to happen is, is that when our import process is done, instead of having to go in and set bin display to show me the referenced media from this sequence, I'm actually going to have Symphony just simply create some new clips for me. Boom, there you go. And they're all called .new.01. And there are my clips back, ready to be stuck back into my clips bin. And guess what? I'm back up and running, ready to show this to a client whenever they get here. Now let me just talk briefly about the difference between batch import and batch capture because obviously they work the same. Batch importing is for importing clips off of your hard drive. Batch capturing is for capturing clips off a of tape. Now here's the big difference. The big difference is, is that if you were to go in and select a sequence that has captured media in it from a tape and you were to say clip batch import, what you can actually do is you can re-import or re-digitize the footage, just what you need, and you can even add handles to either side. So basically, let's say you used you know, five seconds of a 20 minute long clip. What you can do is just rebatch capture that, you know, however much long or however long it was, five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, with little handles on the side in case you want to add a dissolve, instead of recapturing that 20 minute clip. Now, where would you ever use something like this? If you did an offline from tape that was at low resolution, let's say DV resolution, and you needed to come back in and online it in HD, that's how you would do it. You basically would, once you're done, delete all your standard F media, select your sequence, say rebatch capture in HD, and recapture all that footage in and drop it into a new HD timeline. So you can see differences between batch import, batch capture, very subtle, but in the end, it's obviously going to depend on your workflow. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between consolidating and transcoding. Okay, so for this next part, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this surfing bin here, or delete the surfing sequence. I'm going to delete the surfing clips. Just select them all, hit delete, and I'm just going to import a couple of new clips, but I'm actually not going to import them at all. I'm going to right click and I'm going to AMA link to them. And I think I'm going to choose some, let's choose some gliding shots because they're nice and bright. I'll just again select the first three clips and say open. Now, where would you use AMA linking to instead of importing? Well, AMA linking to you would use in situations where you have massive amounts of media and you don't want to sit and wait and spend all of that time importing it. You want to just get in and start editing right away. So what you can do is what I just did, which is to AMA link to this footage. You'll see how quick it was to come in. And what I can do now is I can come in and I can start working and dropping clips into my timeline just like such. I'm just going to grab a few shots here, nothing fancy. Hit B on the keyboard to overwrite. And again, here's another one here. Okay, so we got three shots in my timeline. Very cool. Okay. 
So now here's the situation. The situation is that I want to get in and I want to transcode these shots. Now you're going to see right now that if I come in and I match frame these clips by simply hitting match frame and find bin, it will show me where that transcoded clip is. But now that I've gone in and edited a timeline, what I want to do is I've decided that now, you know, project's almost done. I actually want to take this footage and I want to convert it into Avid Media. So basically, I'm going to take this link to information that's linking the clips on my desktop, and I'm going to convert it or transcode it into Avid DNX codec footage. So how do we go about doing that? Well, there's a couple ways, much like with batch importing. What you can do, and now what I would normally suggest in this situation is, is that if you already have a sequence edited, much like I do here, what you're going to do is instead of coming in and transcoding the clips in your clips bin, what I would suggest doing is coming down to your sequence, I'll just call the sequence here gliding, and come down to your sequence, select your sequence, come up to clip, and come down to consolidate transcode. Now you can also find consolidate transcode, I'm just going to cancel that. You can also find consolidate transcode by simply right clicking on the clip as well and saying consolidate transcode. And what we want to do in this case is we want to, of course, transcode. And you'll see the target video resolution in this case is going to be DVC Pro HD right here. You'll see now the big difference here now with transcoding from a sequence is I can come in and say create those 48 frame handles, meaning it's not going to transcode the entire length of this shot. You'll see these shots are 20 seconds, 20 seconds, and 13 seconds. What I can do is just transcode exactly what I need in my timeline and just add those 48 frame handles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to the Mac drive. You'll see now as soon as I do, it tells me what the space required is, how much is available. I can even get in. I can include reformatted clips already at the target resolution, which I'm not going to check. I can convert the sample rate, convert the audio depth, none of which I'm going to do. I could even create a new sequence if I wanted to, but I'm not going to because I want to stick with the original sequence that I had. What I could now do is say transcode, and it's going to go in and it's going to convert these clips to that new media. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new sequence and I'm going to say transcode. There's a reason I'm going to do this and you're going to see why in just a second. So I'm going to say transcode. What it's going to do is it's going to create a new timeline right here called appropriately enough transcoded and you'll see there are these three clips and what's the big difference? Well you'll see we have 36, 37, and 39. 36, 37, and 39. 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 13 seconds. Let's come down here. 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. So there's a big difference. Now obviously the big difference is, is that if I was to have let's say a thousand clips that I imported that were each you know 30 seconds long, you're talking about a lot of footage to get in and transcode right off the bat. Doing things the way that I just showed you, you can essentially edit your entire sequence. You don't have to import anything and then when you're done all you're going to do is you're going to transcode just the footage that you used onto your actual Avid media drives, into your Avid media files folder, into the MXF folder as actual MXF media for you to then archive, maybe you need to send it to you know somebody to output for you or something like that. Now I did do this for a reason because what I want to do here is I just want to delete these clips in this sequence here. That's the newly transcoded footage. I'm just going to delete that here and you'll see that I still have my original AMA link to timeline here. What I'm going to do is just hit F7 to match frame here, uh, F8 to find the bin, there's the clip right there. Well, you'll see that what I have now is I have these clips in my timeline and what I can also do, the other way to transcode is to select these clips, right click and I can just say consolidate transcode because you know what, I want to transcode just the entire clip. You see I have no sequences selected to DVC Pro. I'm just going to get in and say transcode and say go. What's going to happen is it's going to transcode these clips it's going to drop them into my bin. The only problem that I have now is that it's created this brand new fantastic Avid Media here. The only problem with doing things this way after already editing a timeline is that if I come in and I match frame this clip, you would think that if I hit find bin, it would go to this new media. But the only problem is, is that it does not. You'll see that if I hit F8, the footage is still going to this original AMA link to clip, not to the new footage. So basically, if I was to go in and I was to delete these AMA links thinking that these, this is the footage that's in my timeline and move this project off this drive to somewhere else, I'm not going to have the media with it. So if you're going to work this way, if you're going to go in an AMA link to let's say a thousand clips and you want to have all those clips on your hard drive right away, you just want to get in and transcode them right off the bat, do not put any footage inside of a sequence because none of it's going to relink to your transcoded footage. 
My suggestion is that if you want to go the AMA route, you want to get in, you want to just start editing right away, do that. Get all that footage in there, edit it all, get it exactly the way that you want, and then when you're done, simply select your sequence, say transcode, and only convert what you need, plus a little bit of handles on either side onto your drive to really save yourself a ton of hard drive space. Okay, so transcoding, basically a way to take AMA Link 2 files, or really any file for that matter, and take it and convert it from one format or codec to another inside of Media Composer or Symphony. So what exactly does consolidating mean? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to delete these clips, or these AMA linked clips, and I'm going to delete the sequence. Let's actually delete the clips there. I'm going to delete the sequence, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit again a quick sequence here, nothing too fancy, just like such. B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, drop it into the sequences bin, exactly the same thing again. So I've decided that, you know what, this project is finished. I'm happy with it. I'm going to archive it. The only problem is that, you know, again, I have a thousand clips, each clip is 30 seconds long in this clips bin. And I really don't want to back up all of that media. That's terabytes and terabytes of media. All I want to do is I just want to create new media from what I have in my timeline that's the length of the clip plus a little bit of handles that I can then take and archive. Maybe it's onto a Blu-ray, onto another drive, or something like that. Well, here's how you go about doing that. This is where we're going to use Consolidate. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that I'm using one hard drive, but you might be using three or four hard drives, and you might have this media scattered across all those hard drives. So what do you do? Well, Consolidate, and you always hear these ads on the radio, you know, do you have a lot of debt? What you need to do is you need to take all your debt, and you need to consolidate that debt. You need to bring it all together into one location so that it's easier to manage, or in our case, easier to back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my sequence. I'm just going to call my sequence gliding, of course. I'm going to select the sequence. I'm going to right click. I'm going to come back up to consolidate transcode. But instead of transcoding, I'm going to consolidate. Now, here's the cool thing with this. Right now, I'm working off my Mac hard drive. If I had another hard drive that I wanted to archive this project onto, and I had it plugged in, I could simply select that other hard drive. When I'm going to do my consolidate, consolidate all my media onto that hard drive, and then I'm only going to have what I'm using in my timeline on that drive, plus whatever handles I have in here, just like that. Now, depending on how you want to do this, you could get in, you could create a new sequence to that consolidated media, so you'll still have a sequence that relinks to all this old media. Why don't I just do that? I'm just going to create a new sequence. I can delete the original media files when I'm done if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do that as a separate task. Because what's important to keep in mind is that once, I, if I have another hard drive here, once I consolidate everything onto that hard drive and I remove that hard drive, I can essentially go in and blow away everything else in this project and not have to worry about any of the stuff that I consolidated onto that new drive. So I'm not going to delete the original media files when done. Now the next option that I have down here is to skip the media files already on the target drive. Now what's important to keep in mind is that if I did have another hard drive, I could leave this selected. But because I'm still working on the same drive I was working before, and I want to mimic what would happen if I was putting this onto another drive, I'm just going to deselect that so that it's going to create the new clips for me. But remember, if you're going to a different drive, you can leave that selected because remember, this will be a brand new drive you've attached on there to do your backup onto. So there's not going to be any of the media files that you're currently working with. So I'm just going to leave everything else deselected. I'm going to come down to consolidate and you'll see that the system is now creating me three new clips for me over here in my sequences bin as well as creating me a new sequence called gliding consolidated and you'll see these new clips are obviously much shorter in duration than their original counterparts. So the important thing to keep in mind when you want to transcode clips, when you want to take clips either that were AMA linked to or you already have clips in your bin and you want to convert them from one format, one codec to another, that's when you're going to use transcode. For consolidating, in most cases where you're going to use consolidating, not all cases, but in most cases where you're going to use consolidate is if you want to take a sequence that obviously has clips scattered across multiple drives, you want to take all of those clips, create duplicates of them, and put them all in one place and basically shorten them up so you only have just what you've used plus a little bit of handles to really free up a lot of extra hard drive space on your machine. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.